Exactly as I predicted five months ago, the political class, the establishment and the media are doing everything imaginable to sabotage Brexit. So they had a by-election in Richmond, an area in London that voted 70% to remain in the EU, and imagine my shock, the pro-Remain candidate won. First off, when are we having a second by-election? I mean, that's how you want it, right? Just keep making everyone vote again and again until you get the result you want. But then the media came out and hailed it as a stunning reversal of Brexit sentiment across the entire country. Right, so 20,000 posh twats in Richmond represents the country better than 17.4 million Brexit voters. I don't think so. So you got 70% of the vote for Remain, but only 50% of the vote for the Remain candidate, Sarah Olney. Let me do the maths here. You lost 20% of the vote in an area that was already overwhelmingly pro-Remain. How on earth is that a repudiation of Brexit? Olney said that Brexit supporters were intolerant, backward-looking and divisive. A regurgitation of the narrative that anyone who voted for Leave is a racist bigot who just hates immigrants. Isn't it interesting that Olney and her supporters like to virtue signal about how tolerant and pro-diversity they are while choosing to live in the whitest area of London possible. Yeah, if you're so convinced about the wonderful cultural enrichment that mass immigration brings, why do you reside in the area with the least number of immigrants? Pretty racist, if you ask me. And while we're on the subject of intolerance, it's Vote Remain supporters who have been the most intolerant of Brexit voters. Disowning them, smearing them, publicly shaming them, attacking them in the street, wishing deadly illnesses upon their babies. Olney also said that she would, quote, vote to override the referendum result. So let me get this straight. Your party has the word Democrats in its name, yet you're talking about overriding the democratic will of the British people. Yeah, that's not very democratic. Olney had to be dragged off the air by her spin doctor during a radio show because she made a complete tit out of herself proving she knew nothing about the EU. There was no clear manifesto for what happened to you know, our membership of the single market. Or what yes, there was. The Remain movement. campaign said we were going to leave the single market if we voted out. I'd... Yes, they did. They repeatedly, every single mem leading member of the Remain campaign said a vote to leave the EU was a vote to leave the single market. Nothing unclear about that at all. I am I'm really sorry, but Sarah only has to leave now. No, she doesn't. Sarah, if, you're not, if you want to be elected member of Parliament, I think you should probably be able to answer some simple questions about your policy. Can you get Sarah back on the line, please? Sorry about that. We've waited an hour. Yeah, we I don't know who you are. We've waited an hour to have this interview. If she doesn't want to answer questions from a, a radio station, perhaps she's not fit to be an MP. And they had the temerity to call Vote Leave supporters low information. This all happened after a ruling by a bunch of corrupt Europhile High Court judges who said that when we all voted for the government to implement Brexit, it didn't really mean that we were voting for the government to implement Brexit. That's strange, because when I received this letter from the government before Brexit, it said the government will implement what you decide. It didn't say, your vote is worthless because we'll just keep having referendums until we get the result we want. It didn't say, your vote is worthless because a bunch of twattish celebrities, corrupt judges and lefty politicians will whine and bitch for months to try and subvert and sabotage a democratic result because they lost and they're butthurt about it. It didn't say, your vote is worthless because your own supposed representatives will demand a parliamentary vote and then vote against the democratic decision of their own constituents. It didn't say, your vote is worthless because we'll insert endless amendments to water it down to the point where it's unrecognisable from what you thought you were voting on in the first place. And now we're about to have another bunch of corrupt Europhile judges tell us once again that our vote meant nothing. Thing, while the media lectures us to not be mean to the corrupt Europhile judges. While Remain pressure groups celebrate the High Court ruling as a victory for parliamentary sovereignty. As they support the very entity, the EU, that has completely eviscerated parliamentary sovereignty. While Remain pressure groups literally call themselves the People's Challenge, while shitting all over the will of the people. While super wealthy elitists like Gina Miller swoop in to save the country from the baying Brexit mob. What part of the word leave don't you understand? The baying Brexit mob being poor people across the country who have lost their jobs and seen their communities crippled 
because of the EU. While the media constantly invokes an MP that was murdered by a neo-Nazi lunatic, to suggest somehow that Brexit supporters were responsible. Her stance on refugees and immigration attracted the attention of those with sinister, extreme views. While the media blames Brexit supporters for a hate crime wave that never happened, hate crime prosecutions actually fell. While the BBC and Sky News compete with each other to see who can suck the most globalist dick. While Tony fucking Blair, the war criminal, rises from whatever godforsaken crypt he's been hiding in to scorn the silly plebs for daring to defy the globalists who know what's best for them. While thousands of libtards, the same ones who protested against Blair's bloodletting, crowd the streets to virtue signal about how we need to remain in the EU because love or something. Yeah, word of advice. Attaching your political cause to an arbitrary emotion that has nothing to do with reality isn't an argument. While those same libtards side with the very multimillionaires, Wall Street banks and crony capitalist financial institutions that they supposedly despise. If the people in this country think that they're going to be cheated, they're going to be betrayed, then we will see political anger, the likes of which none of us in our lifetimes have ever witnessed in this country. This is exactly what I warned would happen after Brexit. This is what they've done in every European country that's rejected the EU dictatorship. Just keep making them vote again and again and again. Just keep pounding them over the head with rulings, judgments and delays. Just keep pounding them with hysteria about the dreadful apocalypse that will befall any country that dares to reclaim its national sovereignty. Just keep browbeating them into submission. Well, we're not going to submit. As Nigel Farage said, if this Tory government doesn't deliver Brexit, the political class is in for a seismic shock. Things are going to be different this time. We're done putting up with your crap. There's a populist revolution sweeping the West in America, Italy, France, Germany, Holland. And we're not going to let you stand in the way of it.